when I started, no one supported me. Everyone said, why are you doing this? I had no support from anyone. And it was kind of like just me working really, 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 really hard to make my dreams um, happen. And you need to really want it so badly because with entrepreneurship, it's not a linear process. There are ups and downs and you need to be prepared for that. Welcome to Jane Jackson Careers, a podcast that takes your career to the next level. Here's your host, Jane Jackson, author of Amazon Careers bestseller, Navigating Career Crossroads. Welcome back to my careers podcast where I interview fascinating professionals who are leaders in their field and have made really interesting career changes. Now today I have on the show Jane Copeland. I'm so lucky to have Jane on the show because she's super busy. But Jane Copeland is a big ideas girl boss with even bigger hair who helps people build online empires and their personal brand. She's also a next generation marketing strategist publisher of copingwithjane.com and author of the book Boardroom to Baby and the secret weapon behind hundreds of successful online businesses, including mine because I went through her program. Now, Jane's obsession with internet marketing and her teachings have helped so many people across the globe to stand out from the crowd and redefine their version of success. Her work is specifically focused around helping women in service-based businesses to find more clients, put their offers together, sell over the phone and we all hate selling over the phone so we can just get over it with Jane's help and put together sales funnels through Facebook advertising and become web celebs. Jane's own empire includes an online business education platform and community for women, the Business Made Beautiful Academy, as well as sold out online marketing programs and an award-winning blog and events. So we're so lucky to have her on the show today. So welcome Jane. Hi, Jane. Thrilled to be here. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Yeah, it was a rather good one, wasn't it? I'm very impressed. I'm also very out of breath after all that because <laughs> because you're so super, super busy and there's so much going on. And um, I mean, I'm part of your six figure funnels program, which is fantastic. Yes. Um, oh, and so you. you've just got so many offerings and all of them are really just so supportive of um, entrepreneurs who want to get moving. So thank you for that. And, you know, working with you, I thought, well, I've got to have you on the podcast and find out about okay. how you grew your business, how you came to be. And um, so how about to kick us off, tell us a little yeah. bit about your early days and what your career aspirations might have been when you were a little girl. Yeah, very interesting question. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I've always, always, always been extremely ambitious, but um, and wanted to kind of do create something big. But it was only really after the birth of my son, when I made that happen, which was what, five years ago. But up until that point, I was a bit of a jack of all trades. I was um, in kind of mid management, um, and in across multiple different industries and, you know, from finance to selling, um, that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, so I guess what I'm doing now is nothing like what I was actually doing in my corporate career, but I was quite successful in my corporate career. I just wasn't doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> and so, and so what happened five years ago to prompt you to set up your own business? Yeah, well, I had a baby. <laughs> That's mm. one of the things. <laughs> that can do it, but, yeah. So what happened was um, I, I kind of thought it was now or never and um, and I had a small window of opportunity being that I was on maternity leave to kind of turn my idea into a business. And um, what actually happened was I was reading through a magazine. I think it was the oh, – I can't remember the name of it, but it was this little – magazine Sunday Life and one of my favorite uh journalists Jacinta Wrighton Jacinta Tynan had written a piece on um basically it was about how when you get older how likely it is that you would follow your dreams and it says that when you're young you have like all these big ideas and yada 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 but when you get older you get complacent comfortable and then it's you kind of give up that dream. So when I was reading this article, it really resonated with me. And I had this kind of like it made brought this picture to mind of 
me standing on um, in Sydney Harbour and there was this big cargo boat in front of me and it had lots of cargo on it and it was kind of sailing away tooting its horn and to me that symbol or that symbolized um my hopes and dreams kind of like you know my ship was sailing sort of thing so anyway what i did was i wrote a letter to the editor right of um sunday life and i said if this gets published my little bit you know how they had let they've got letters to the editor and yeah. little yeah and i said if this gets published that means that yes i meant to i meant to kind of, kind of like throw caution to the wind and do something so anyway it did get published and i took that as a sign mm. <laughs> from the universe that i should do something so that was one of the reasons another reason was that yeah i had a baby and i really um when i had a baby i kind of lost my identity in that corporate sense so basically I was very attached to my job, even though it wasn't fulfilling me inside. And, um, you know, the fact that I didn't really want to go back to my job after I had my baby, I kind of had lost my identity. Now, around the same time, there was a third thing that happened, and that is that I got really sick with an autoimmune disease. And um, I ended up with, it affected one of my eyes. So I had a disfigurement on my face, a big one. It's fixed now, sort of. But, um, the, the net result was that I lost my identity. So I decided to create a new one by getting online and completely reinventing myself. You know what I mean? Wow. So that's kind of the start of why I started my business. And I talk, when I talk at events, this is the kind of the story that I tell them because it's quite um, interesting sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting what it is that prompts a big change. And certainly ha having a baby, going on maternity leave, having that time off when you're, you know, nurturing this lovely baby, thinking, do I really want to go back into the corporate life? Because it'll be very much the same. And then you've got to juggle your time and everything else. And so often when yes. you're a young mum, you'd like to spend more time with your, your child. And if you can have a home-based business, that would be good. But it sounds like you had an even bigger uh, life change with this this um, autoimmune disease that must have made you just take a step back and think, oh, what can I possibly do next? So there was a well, bit of soul searching yeah. then. It was. It literally um, made me change my lens on life, mm -hmm. basically. Oh, well, there you go. There's no pun intended, of course. I know. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so, how did you um, decide on the next step? What what, what yeah, was it that yeah. prompted well, your ideas? Yeah, I think, Jane, it's really important to mention here that I had a deadline. The deadline was that I had a window of opportunity being on maternity leave. So I saw that as it's now or never to do something. And this is also why I see with other people that even though they so desperately want to have their own business or, you know, whatever, reach some other goal and they don't do it is because there's no deadline. Mm. But I had that deadline. I had the deadline that I was on maternity leave. I also um, had the deadline that, or it wasn't really a deadline, but I had the pressure that, you know, I was kind of, it was really difficult time for me with the change of identity. So I kind of needed to th throw myself into something to take my mind mm -hmm. out of what was happening in my life at the time, which was quite difficult. But anyway, yeah, so I made that decision. The only problem was that I had no idea what I was going to do. Absolutely none. And um, it was really difficult trying to come up with an idea. So in the end, I just thought, well, what am I good at? And I thought I was good at, well, it wasn't that I was good at it, but I loved writing and branding, even though I hadn't done those in my career. So I created uh, something which I thought would harness both those skills, which was a blog and I was also, I've always been interested in um, women's voices and giving women a platform to talk about things that mean something to them. So initially, I created this incredible blog, which is still around today. And um, it was, it just exploded after I launched it. And then I also wrote a book called Boardroom to Baby. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's really how I started my well, it wasn't really a business in the early days, but I guess my um, well, how I stepped forward into creating something big, if you like. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny how, how things sort of organically evolved as well, because your blog, that's the copingwithjane.com blog. Is that right? 
Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, just the name sounds like you were going through change. How were you dealing with it? And obviously you were sharing, you know, the trials and tribulations that you were going through and other people would have resonated with all of your challenges because we all have tough stuff that we've got to go through. And so often we think that we're going through it and we're the only ones. But to be quite honest, you know, so many other people share this this challenging journey. And I think you must have been just so honest with what you were going through and sharing valuable thoughts and advice and just insights, which is why, you know, obviously it took off because other people feel the same. Actually at the beginning, um, what I, it was more like a magazine and I Mm. had a lot of contributors on there. So it Mm. wasn't so much me as it was a lot of other famous people on Mm. there. It's completely changed now. So you wouldn't know that, but um, (laughs) yeah. So, and that's actually why it exploded because I had a lot of, famous writers on there who had big communities and they were sharing, um, you know, their articles on my blog. That's how it kind of really um, exploded initially. Mm-hmm. And then from from the blog, Coping with Jane, to writing the book Boardroom to Baby or Baby to Boardroom, yeah. <laughs> both <laughs> ways, it can actually go both ways. Um, how, how did you find the book helped you to grow the business? Oh, it was a complete game changer. So I was in the media a lot. Um, it just resonated so well uh, with what was happening in the world and community at that time. I mean, this is like what, almost six years ago. Mm. So the whole mm. mumpreneur thing was kind of new-ish. It's not like now. It's been done to death now. It's not not really big news. But, yeah, so that kind of – and it put me on the map. And, um, yeah, I was in, you know, getting interviewed all the time in magazines and then doing speaking gigs and stuff like that. So that definitely gave me profile. Mm. And, and so now that you've gained the profile and the business has grown, tell us about all the different aspects of your business, because you've got your finger in so many parts. I don't know how you've got time to do this as a as a young mum <laughs> as well, but you've got so, so many businesses. So talk, talk us through what you've got now. What do you do? Yeah, so what I have now is, well, first of all, go, just going back a bit, at all that was happening and there wasn't actually a business yet, like people would say to me, oh, my gosh, you must be doing so well. And I'd be like, well, no, I'm earning about $100 a month. So even (laughs) though I had a lot of um, profile, I wasn't actually earning that much money. It was only when I started working with a coach and she said to me, because I didn't know how to monetize, I was like, well, how do I monetize this? And it happened really fast. Like all of this happened in under 12 months of me kind of going on maternity leave and building my blog. So she said, well, why don't, what, you know, why don't you actually show people how to create a blog and why don't you become the fairy blog mother? So I did. (laughs) And that afternoon I sent out an email and I was fully booked. And that's really how I started. um, That was the start of my business. So now what my business looks like today is I run the Business Made Beautiful Academy And um, my key offer in there is a mastermind uh, where, um, which consists of training, helping women to learn how to market themselves and build a successful online business. That's really my main offer. And then I have some other online offerings as well. So, yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> mm, okay. And so how how do you manage your time? You're you're a mum, you're an entrepreneur, yeah. you've got your your yeah. your business made beautiful mastermind, yeah. you've got all of your online programs that you mm-hmm. market, you take time to be interviewed on my podcast. Very kind of you. I know it's so hard to schedule <laughs> you in. So I mean how how do you juggle? How do you juggle your time? Yeah, really great question. Um I have a lot of support. I have, well, number one, I've only got one son. And um, so whereas, and I say that because a lot of the women I work with have three kids and I have uh, a stay-at-home dad basically and also my parents help. So to say that I have a lot of support so I can help, I can really focus on my business is really true. And I think that's important to to acknowledge to people out there, or especially women who might be listening, is that, you know, it is hard being a mum in business or starting a business when you do have, you know, kids, young kids. It's possible, but um, it is harder. But I did it. So I started my business 
while with my, you know, and, and did it with my baby on my lap. And it was hard, but it's worth persevering. Now, in addition to the support I have, I also have a team. So I, I've got a team of like three people who help me as well. So I guess how I how I can do it is that I do have support, but it didn't necessarily start out that way. In fact, when I started, no one supported me. Everyone said, why are you doing this? I had no support from anyone. And it was kind of like just me working really, 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 really hard to make my dreams um, happen. Mm. Would you which, say Would you say that you really need to have that strong desire to make it happen oh for gosh. it to work? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I was getting interviewed the other day for a magazine and they said to me, they asked me three tips or three, what are your top three things for aspiring young entrepreneurs and that was the number one thing. You need to really want it so badly because with entrepreneurship it's not a linear process there are ups and downs and um you know it's it's and you need to be prepared for that it's it's um like business is tough having your own business is even tougher however it's the it's so rewarding and it's totally worth it but yeah it is there is a lot of ups and downs like over the years i can I now manage the ups and downs really, really well and they don't bother me as such. But initially, as a new entrepreneur, you do need to be um, or you need to expect that. And I guess that's something that I see quite often is that so someone might start their business and expect it to be a success within six months or something like that. Like it does kind of take time and um, and a lot of effort initially. Yeah, well, I'm 100% on the same page with you there. I conduct um, quite a number of face-to-face -face, uh, road to entrepreneurship workshops. And always at the Hi. beginning of the workshop, I tell people, if by the end of this full day workshop, you've decided, uh oh, entrepreneurship is not for me, then I will mm -hmm. have saved you a lot of time, effort and heartache. Because without totally. the desire, yeah, without the desire to really push through when the going gets tough, then you will quit. And this is why most small businesses fail in the first two oh, years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But if yes. you've got a great yes. business idea, and you think, no, I can really you know, make a go of it. And even when the going gets tough, I've got the resilience and the self reliance to find out how to overcome it. And I love that saying, the obstacle is the way, um, then that means <laughs> you've got the right. determination to succeed. And obviously, you you had that determination, you wanted to make a difference and do yeah. something different in your life, didn't you? And so having created this, this whole academy, and, and you've got this great online ecosystem. And that's how I yeah. found you, because I found you online. And I thought, Oh, what is this? And you kept popping up absolutely everywhere, Jane. Oh, my gosh, um, so well, here's the thing, <laughs> I probably found you. <laughs> you think that you found me. Well, maybe you I were maybe you. you were stalking me, and then I stalked yeah, you. You, ne you never know. <laughs> it's a bit like a chicken and egg situation, isn't it? But but yeah. now now I'm I'm actually going through your program, the Six Figure Funnels, which is great because I'm learning how to market online more effectively. I I leverage my profile a lot, but again. Uh, like you, it's like, okay, I'm doing really well, but then how can I just make that little bit more of a difference? And what you're doing for me is creating a good structure. So how about, tell us about, you know, all that you do with regard to the Facebook advertising and your marketing programs, etc. Yeah, well, I, um, I do focus a lot on Facebook marketing and that's not social media as such. So I love to teach, uh, for want of a better word, sales funnels. And really, that's just the process of finding your ideal clients and turning that client into a paying customer. And at the moment, uh, right now, one of the best ways or, or mediums or platforms that you can use to do that is by paid Facebook advertising. So I tend to teach that a lot in my programs as well. And um, yeah, so that's that's kind of one of the key things that I teach. But I also teach how to um, position yourself and in a way that's going to sell. So I guess you could call that branding and um, messaging and stuff like that. So in the online land, copy and messaging is just so, so, so important. And if you recall, I was saying that one of my strengths was writing. So one of the reasons why I've been able to break through in this market and and do quite well is because 
online marketing, and this is also why a lot of women are, are quite good at it, it really plays to those my strengths of or and women's strengths of being creative and being able, you know, to communicate well and concisely. So that's a lot of what I help my clients with is honing in on that and positioning them so they can become the next top coach or you, you know what I mean? Like really resonate with people who they can help the most. Yeah, there's so much yeah. buzz around um, content marketing now. And I think that's so important as well, because when people read your content and if you're providing value as a thought leader, that's part of your branding and people get to know you too. So so I, I think creating a lot of content and be a, being able to get it out there and link back to your website uh, must be one of the keys. Yeah, uh, c- completely correct. I mean, the thing is that you don't just want to do write content or create content for the sake of it. The key mm. is to get it in front of people. And one of the best ways to do that is by, you know, driving leads or driving traffic through something like Facebook advertising or other means. Um, but, yeah, so it's about getting that content that you've created in front of people who are going to potentially use your service. <laughs> mm. You know, Jane, you're, you're such an expert when it comes to sales. I'd, I'd love your insight on this. Yes. What is it yes. about so many people, including myself, who, who are so averse to sales as such? What is it that people oh don't God. like about sales? Yes, <laughs> that's so funny you should say that. Well, um, you're right. Something that I do a lot of with my clients is turn them into incredible salespeople and have them converting over the phone really, really well. And I've taken people who are terrified of speaking on the phone to being, you know, and consider themselves introverts and not outgoing and they're incredible salespeople. Uh, People have this big, big, big barrier when it comes to that. And it's just because of the perception out there that they're doing something that, you know, sinister or, you know, forcing someone into something. It's completely not like that. All it is is a conversation about understanding what someone wants and where they want to go. That is really what the conversation is about. So a lot of people don't understand that and a lot of people also, um, there's just fear around it, fear around getting rejected and things like that. Um, But with the right kind of, well, with practice and with a little bit of education around it, anyone can be a great salesperson. Absolutely, like so easily. And one of the reasons why it's so important is because if you can sell face-to-face or over the phone, you will always, you will never be out of work. It's the best skill you can ever have. So with my clients, if they're brand new or if they need to sort of a, a quick injection of cash, I get them selling over the phone, one-on-one high-end coaching programs or or their service because it's it's the fastest way to cash for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I think I think probably a combination of everything comes together to really yeah. create this this wonderful feeling of oh, I I really understand this person and what what you've got to offer. Certainly, you've done it really well because you know I, I felt like I knew you before I even spoke to you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was good, yes. wasn't it? <laughs> now, oh, Jane, now Jane, four entrepreneurs, budding entrepreneurs, male or female, or anyone who wants to make a success of their idea. What would you say are your top tips for success? What's really important? Uh, I think that you really need to understand that as a business owner and if you're going into the game of entrepreneurship, that it's really not just about being good at your craft. You have to also be good at marketing and selling. And, um, yeah, and the second thing would be that if you can surround yourself with uh, people who've been there and done done it before or even find a mentor that would save you so much time and effort okay in having to work it out yourself through trial and error and the third thing is that yeah you like we discussed before you really have to want it badly and be resilient and determined to make it happen Mm, valuable valuable advice and i i think we need to tell people where they can find you jane so give us give us um all the places where we can find you i know we can google jane copeland and you're going to <laughs> pop up but let's let's have some direct yeah, links as well right so um you can go to copingwithjane.com 
or businessmadebeautiful.com. And I'm also on Instagram as Coping with Jane and on YouTube as Coping with Jane as well. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Well, what I'm going to do, Jane, is I'll have all of these links on my show notes on janejacksoncoach.com so people can just click through and they can find you right away. And um, I look forward to continuing to following you and learning from you as well. And, and may 2017 be a super, super successful one. My pleasure. Okay, bye. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. You can get a free audiobook download and free 30-day trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Jane Jackson Careers. You've been listening to Jane Jackson Careers. Sign up to receive regular career advice at janejacksoncoach.com.